oh, I'll just start. So I took vocals, for example, vocal production, and we're just gonna go step by step. So let's start, let's start recording. By the way, are you able to hear me? You're able to hear this. Also, are you able to see the screen too? Just yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, hear awesome. and see. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start recording. Why vocals? Because it's an easy instrument to record. Uh, you can start practicing with recording vocals. It's a good start point. And it's so important to learn the, the skills skill in advance. Is this a skill? Can you still record if you're not an engineer? Answer is definitely yes. Can you still record if you do not have any recording background? Yes. Can you still record if you're not a music producer? Yes. So you do not have to produce music. You can still record vocals like top line singers. So let's say I'm Diplo, I'm a music producer, I di I'm Diplo, and I tell my vocalist to record something for me. And that person is going to record something for me. That person is not a music producer, uh, but she can still record vocals or she can still record some sounds. Mm -hmm. So what comes to your mind when it comes to recording? Microphone or some devices to record with, maybe a software. I said maybe a software because you can still start recording without having a, so a, a software oh. to record. Yes, everything is possible. There, there are ways for everything. Mm -hmm. So which microphone? Any microphone, pick any microphone to practice. Whatever in your hands, just pick that one and start recording. Uh, or you can purchase a microphone, of course. You can buy a microphone. Or if you already have one, maybe you don't have to until you practice and until you understand the concept of recording. So microphone examples, we have some microphone examples, any microphone you can use, like professional studio, large diaphragm microphone like Taylor Swift's or something like I have here in the studio, not the studio, I don't have a studio, it's my living room girls. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Cheaper large diaphragm condenser microphone between 100, 300 bucks, you can use something like that. That's what I have normally. That's what I use here. Or cheaper dynamic microphone, the ones people use at the stage. Those are the dynamic microphones. So you can even use those ones. And they're like 20 bucks, 60 bucks. I have, I have one of those. Amazing. Great. Amazing. But I don't know how I would plug it into the computer, though. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we're going to go nice. step. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted to go step by yeah. step. So uh, that way you can, whatever you have in your hand, Brie, that way you can use the, those, whatever you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or earbuds so, I have too. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. You, because you can even record with that, with those and you can even perform with those actually. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but I perform with those sometimes. So <laughs> happens. Or you can even use some cheap USB microphone. You can even record with those. Uh, so main goal is here, here is to start recording somewhere. Mm -hmm. So can you record something else with same technique or similar technique? Yes, but we will take vocals as an example because during this, uh, during this workshop, because that's our instrument, it's easy. Mm -hmm. It is also useful to learn some short terms like mic, microphone, take. So when you record something, you call it take. You can say right. take, take one, take two. So engineer is going to, let's say there's an engineer in the studio is going to say that to you. Let's record four more takes and pick the best ones. Hey, let's do another take. So, so when engineer says stuff like that, don't get confused. Take is the recording, uh, recorded piece of your voice. So this is like a quick example of the mini home studio. So here it is you, you're able to hear. Yeah, of course you're able to see. <laughs> okay, this is you ladies. I know it doesn't have any hair, but this is you. <laughs> so this is the microphone. <laughs> and so when you sing, sing right. and, and I have one of those too, I have. Wow, you have condenser, condenser microphone, great. Uh, well, I have that circle thing that you, mm -hmm. that's in front of it. Yes. And I have a, I have a stand. Oh, amazing. So I do have all those things. I just mm -hmm. don't know where to plug them in. Yes. Uh, I'm so happy that you have all these because actually you can actually start recording some serious, uh, you can actually, yeah. Wow. I'm happy that you have all these because uh, this is going to be, yeah. I mean, it's going to sound better if you have yeah. them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so when you sing, when you sing, uh, signal is gonna go here to your microphone and my, your microphone, it goes to your audio interface. And after the audio interface, it goes to your computer. So how it works, this, this is an audio interface. It takes your signal and turns into another signal and that way you can record that signal to your computer. So when this, when you sing on your microphone, your signal is like small, but when you connect it to your audio interface, your signal gets bigger and resolution of the signal gets better. And that way you can just take some good recordings here and record it on your computer. And these, uh, these audio interfaces are about as they're starting from 80 bucks and you can even find used ones for 50 bucks on eBay. Mm -hmm. So when I first came to New York, I really, really didn't, couldn't bring any of my equipment to here. So I had to buy like a really cheap one. <laughs> and that's so how I, I have to get to... an audio interface, right? Is what you're there, saying? There is no obligation. You do not have to, you can still record your vocals, but it's not going to sound as good as, the audio mm -hmm. interface and you're going to have troubles because in the meantime, when you're recording your vocals, this audio interface is also going to let you hear what you're recording. Yeah. So that's the way to go for, uh, that's the best way. That's the best way. And you can really find like really cheap audio interface, like six box. You can use used ones. If I had, an, I ha if I had one here, I will just send it to you, ship you. But I don't have any more, so I have I have only one, and that's just sitting here. <laughs> so okay, so recording a recording signal Aren't chain they called mm -hmm. sound cards. I just recently found this out that they're also called sound cards, which is such a weird name. Mm -hmm. Sound, yeah. yeah, yeah, Sonia. Sound cards normally. So since I'm from Turkey and and mostly in Europe, people call it sound cards. You, people from yeah. Europe, they mostly okay. call the sound cards. Okay, okay. So the what, audio I, interface? The longest time. Yes. So I thought I was, everyone was like, oh, Sonia, you need a sound card. And I have two audio interfaces. So I was like, oh, like, what's this new thing called sound card? Like, I need to, I need to find one. And I got so confused because I was shopping. I was like, oh, well, why do I need this? I already, I already have. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> You that's such, that's such a good wow yeah you're right people from different countries they call it sound card because that's how they call it in their mm -hmm. country mostly in europe in turkey small countries like mine they call it sound card <laughs> but yeah this is like a more professional way of saying audio interface what it does it takes your signal because your signal is very little very is small let's just picture your signal is very small and this one takes your signal makes it bigger and makes it makes the resolution better let's just think about the uh, taking a picture so let's take uh, take a picture of something take a picture of something with just uh, your old iphone camera or take a picture of it the dsr camera like huge big one so it's it makes a difference so you can still connect your vocal to hear directly your computer you can record things to your computer directly yes you can do it but it's this is just better way i mean you like 50 60 bucks you spend on this and you're gonna get like 1600 or maybe 1000 more so in and out uh, so okay i don't want to talk about statistics now <laughs> sorry i'm studying a lot lately sorry ladies <laughs> okay again what we what do we need audio interface you can have one you don't have to have one but if you have one it's going to be great audio interface takes a signal and converts it so that you can record it on your device on a specific sort of software like ableton like cubase like fruity loops or pro tools there are multiple different uh, softwares you can use okay so let's go to this slide <clears throat> So again, you see the audio interface prices here. There's like expensive ones. They're like one hundred dollar one, and this one, if you find it used, it's about fifty sixty. They're available on eBay or this little one. Even this one might work. It's forty five bucks. And there is one I use for stage, and I use it for my iPad. It's like a very little one, and it was ninety bucks, I guess. And I use it for stage. I use it anywhere. 
I can even use it on my laptop. It's a very small one. It doesn't have many functions, but it works. It gets the job done. So, okay, let's talk about microphones. So this is again, a very fancy microphone. And I even had that microphone, but of course I, nice. I thought I sold it. <laughs> so did, have you ever had a chance to sing with this microphone, Brie? I've sung with good microphones before. Amazing. So, okay. In awesome. studios. So, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Mostly we record vocals with this. This is a super strong microphone. It captures everything. So, you can even hear your neighbors with it. So, you just plug this on your audio interface and you can even hear if you raise the volume, you're going to be able to hear everything. It's super, it's super detailed and it captures everything. That's why we are using mm -hmm. this type of microphone when we are recording vocals uh, on, on, in the studio. So there's another one, if you ever have one of these, this is a small diaphragm micro, uh, condenser. It's the same thing, but it's just the condenser. The part diaphragm is very small. So what this does, you can just mostly uh, record percuss percussive instruments anything short like drums, anything like punchy. For vocals, we prefer this one because it's a large diaphragm. It captures all the details. It captures all the transient, transients in your voice because you want that transients for the mix. You want that transients to make a good sound, vocal, vocal sound, vocal pack. Small diaphragm microphones, you don't, don't uh, you mostly use it mostly for uh, drums or some short percussive elements. Dynamic microphone, you, we use at the stage. It's not too strong, captures only if you're close to it because of the, uh, because of the polar pattern. Uh, that, that's too much detail. I, we don't have to get into those, uh, but you just need to be close to this microphone in order to uh, record. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that way this can capture your vocals, but you're not gonna hear a lot of details when you record with this microphone. You're not going to hear all the details, but this one, you're going to hear every detail, but this one you're going to hear, you're going to be able to capture some transients, some tra transients, uh, mostly uh, for the stage. So these are designed for the stage. So USB microphones, you can even record with this one. This is a $25, $29 microphone. I even had like a cheaper one. I was even recording some stuff with it. And no audio in interface needed if you buy this one, but it will not sound so great. So instead of buying this, just get the audio interface, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, something. That way you can start some real uh, serious recording. Yeah, especially if you already have a microphone. So, yeah. Exactly, right? Oh, and don't forget to get some XLR cables and all that good stuff. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. That's the most important. I forgot to add that, yeah. What's that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me show you. Um, what it... Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very good. Idea. Yeah, I forgot to, about XLR cable. So, XLR cable. So, when you, uh, when you order, order an audio interface, uh, this is going to look like this is an XLR. Sorry, okay, here it here how it looks like, seven bucks. So, that way you can connect your microphone here. This is mm -hmm. a balance. This type of uh, cable is a balanced cable. So it balances your signal. It's not, uh, yeah, it is balancing your signal. So that way you can capture everything and you connect this, the other side, you connect the other side to your audio interface and your audio interface is connected to your uh, uh, computer. And I'm gonna show you Kush that soon. So this is like seven bucks. You can even find cheaper ones. I have so many of those. I can even ship you some because I, uh, too many, I've got too many. <laughs> so, okay, you can even use your iPhone earbuds. No audio interface needed. It sounds okay. What I use it for? I use it for for my iPads. If I gonna if I'm gonna record some vocals on the go, I can use this, and it sounds actually okay. It's not too bad. Uh, you can even use a fitness he headset condenser microphone. So there are so many microphones, so many options. Options are endless, and this is like a fitness microphone. But you can even use this one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay. And basically any microphone. <laughs> so you can even buy a 911 microphone so you can use that one. <laughs> so this 911 lady is probably on action right now. But <laughs> okay. Setting the vocal microphone distance. This part is very important because uh, you have all the equipment, right? Right now you have the, let's say you have the microphone, you have the audio interface, but you should be able to get a good sound from what you have. And the best thing to do, but how, how do you start getting a good signal? Uh, your voice is a signal. Just don't think about your voice like some vocal voice. Think about it as signal. And it has, it's, your signal has some data inside. Okay, so this data has to come here correctly. That way you can just record it on your, that way you can just take this data and record it on your, uh, save it on your computer. And this is the distance when you're recording. This should be the distance. Uh, let me show you more examples. That way we can get into it. Okay, if you're recording with a large condenser microphone, here's distance. Six inches is really a good idea. If it's four or five, it's okay. But six is very good, recommended. Seven, eight, if you're too far from your microphone, you're not, you're gonna, unfortunately, you're gonna capture all the background sound and you do not need that background sound. So six feet, oh, sorry, six feet, six inches. So between microphone and between your mouth, six inches. Just like this, That's just like this guy. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> so how, you, how you should do it. This is the best way, mm -hmm. recommended way. So dynamic microphone, you can come a little bit more closer with the dynamic microphone. So you, if you're recording something, you can just come a little bit more closer because dynamic microphone does, they don't have these large diaphragms or they, they're not condensers. So they're not gonna capture everything already. So you'll be fine. So you can come a little bit closer if you're recording with this type of microphone, stage microphone. Mm -hmm. And when you record this, uh, just hold it like this, hold the microphone like this because here, here is how it works. So you get a different signal here. And if you sing like this, if your mouth was, was here, then you're not gonna get the best signal. Here is how you get the best signal. This is the correct placement when you're recording with dynamic microphone because of the polar pattern. So polar pattern, okay, I, I promise not to get into the details, details, but this is polar pattern is very important when you're recording, it's so important. When you're staging, when you're on the stage, it's not that important. But on during recording, it's the most important thing. So here is where, where this mac, uh, microphone is going to capture the sounds. Not here. Not here. These are dead end. Not here, but only here. Only here, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So how to, hold, how to hold mic properly, dynamic mix. Uh, there's a really cool... Uh, there's a really cool article I found earlier and you can just go on this article and you can, depends on the, uh, depends on the style you're singing at the stage, there are techniques to hold the microphone, but you know, if you're interested in it, this is just extra, you don't have to learn everything. Mm -hmm. So how to hold this studio mic, do not hold this one <laughs> because it will record that too. So we do not, we're not holding this one uh, because this is going to hold itself already. That's set up. Mm -hmm. And how to hold this mic? You don't have to hold this mic. Just keep this microphone in your mind as a stage idea because you don't have to hold it. And you can do other things uh, as you're not holding it. So, okay, we talked about the microphones and placements for vocals. Here is your voice, six inches between you and microphone. If it's a condenser microphone, six inch. If it's a dynamic microphone, I recommend three. And I recommend three is actually good because I tested these. I recorded some art artists before. So it is better. it's better. If it's a condenser microphone, six feet is good. Six uh, inches is good. Okay, so your signal is here, microphone, it goes to audio interface. See, your signal is going here and then your computer. Okay, let's talk about the interface one more time. Here is the interface, audio interface. Your signal is gonna go to this interface. And then after, finally, we are on the DAW, digital to audio workstation. And you do not have to learn what DAW means, but just know that this is, this is the software you need to record any signal to. 
So there are different types of digital, uh, DAW. So you're going to hear this a lot, DAW. So if an engineer asks you, or, or if a friend from a music production group or a, uh, music, some, if a friend asks you, what is DAW? Uh, sorry, it, they mention you just that way you're going to know that DAW is the a software to you to record right. anything. So Ableton, uh, here is how it looks on Ableton. And here is how it looks on Logic. And here's how it looks on Cubase. And here's how it looks on a free to loops. And here, here it is, Pro Tools. This is the super popular one. This is so popular. If, especially if you want to work in the studio one day, you can totally learn Pro Tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. because that's what they require you, require you to learn normally. Mm -hmm. Big guys want that, so. <laughs> okay, if you're ready to record, how do you start it? Ready to record? Choose which channel you record. So you just go on your Ableton or go on your uh, any other DAW, go on the program and choose which channel you want to record. So you're gonna find an audio channel to record, an audio channel. And you're gonna set up your microphone and I'll show you all those. Select that channel or track. Sometimes we call those channels tracks and then hit record. And hit stop. Super easy. And hit record on Ableton. So what you do here is Ableton. You just go, let's say you want to record he vocals here on this channel. And just go here, name the channel. We're going we're gonna to talk all those details, don't worry. You go here, you select the channel. How do you select the channel? You just click on this red button. That way you can select the channel. And then you hit record here. Here it is, record. Okay. And for different DAWs, you're going to see records. See, this is Pro Tools, and here is the record button. And this is Pro Tools Loops, and here is that record button. It's the red dot. It's the same thing on all the DAWs. And Cubase, here's the record button. And, OK, Logic, here's the record button. So I love Logic's record button a lot because it's big. You get to see that easily. And Ableton is just here. Here is the black dot. It gets red. When you pick a channel, it gets red. That way you can click on it and you can start recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, we are here, ready to record. Hit record on Ableton and that way you recorded something. Here it is. Picture, imagine that this is your vocal. This is your vocal signal, okay? What can go wrong? So, so far we talk about microphones and all. But there, are, there is a lot can go wrong when you're recording. As soon as, until you hit the record button, a lot can go wrong. What can ruin your signal? Too loud. If your signal is too loud, then you're not gonna get a good uh, recording. You're not gonna get a good take. And that take is not gonna help you. You're not gonna be able to use it. You can just delete that and record again. Until when? Until you get something like this. So, when first you record the vocals or any instrument, just make sure it's not too quiet. Look at this. This is super yeah. quiet. Mm -hmm. And you do not want to see that. It shouldn't be that quiet because why? You can raise a, you can turn on, turn up the vo turn the volume up, but you're gonna be able to you're gonna hear all the background, all the noise, all the unwanted frequencies. So that vocal take is not going to work for you. Engineer is going to tell you that, okay, go home, record this again. I can't use it. Mm -hmm. So something like this, you can record something like this. By the way, here it is. This is a mono signal. When you record with your vocals, when you record your vocals, your signal is going to be mono like this, mono. And I know this one is like stereo because there are two lines, but it's okay. Just picture this as mono, mono, just one signal. Just, just delete the second one. Just see, look, this is a bigger, a wider signal. And look at this. This one is a little bit more wider. So you should get something like this when you first record. And don't ever get something like this. If it's too loud, it's not going to work. You can just delete that. Trust me. Uh, engineers don't like that because this, it means that your signal is too loud and it's going to create a lot of problems when you're when during the mixing process. So that's going to be a problem for 
mixing engineers. So again, you do not have to be a music producer. You can hire a music producer. You can get somebody to make music for you and you can just record the vocals and that should be it. But just make sure you don't record it too loud. Just make sure you don't record it too uh, quiet like this. So adjust the volume in the beginning minus 12 decibel. I'll get into the details of this. Again, I, I'm, I'm gonna make sure we have like really detailed outline and I'm gonna send this PowerPoints to everybody so everybody can see step-by-step step what you have to do. And you don't have to be a producer, you don't have to be an engineer. Trust me, you can, anybody can do these. It's just, there's few important things to take a look at and that's all, trust me. Uh, adjust the volume in the beginning, minus 12 dB. I will show you what, what I mean on Ableton. So you won't have issues later. And here's a good art article to read. I'm also gonna show you this article so you can get some ideas about step-by-step -step recording. And what else can ruin your signal? Pops, pop filter. Uh, this is a pop filter. And mm. this filters all the popping sounds. So pop filters are being used to stop plosives. Plosives are the blast of the air that come from your mouth. Whenever you use the words with hard letters like B, P, T, S. So nice. let's say you're breaking my heart. When I say you're breaking my heart. Okay, somebody is joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I say you're breaking my heart, when I use the B, that is a popping sound and that is gonna ruin the signal, ladies. That is gonna be create problem. So that's why we are using this pop filter to eliminate, uh, uh, eliminate some of those pops. We're not gonna be able to eliminate everything, but we're gonna be able to eliminate some popping sounds starting from this pop filter. And that was it for today. We're gonna continue. I'll give you very detailed guidelines after, I promise you. Uh, and especially starting, now we're at this part, we are finally on our DAW, we learned where the record button. I just take this as an example. You just go here on Ableton, you just find this record button here, uh, not the record button, sorry, uh, arm button. So you select the track, this is gonna let you select the track, otherwise, you're going to end up recording to all channels or no channels. You're just going to have to select it first. You're going to say that, okay, this is a channel I want to record my vocals on. And you're going to pick that channel and you're going to click on uh, this red dot. It's going to record. So for Pro Tools, it's the same thing. You're just going to go here. You're just going to click on this arm track. Uh, this is like a little red dot here. You're going to see. Just click on it. That way you can select this channel and then you're going to click on red button here, that's gonna record. It's the same thing. Just the colors are different, name is different. Exactly, th these are all the same things. So what happens on Fruity Loops, you just select the track and you click on a red button and it's gonna record. So it's same thing for everything. Again, same thing for Cubase, same thing for Logic. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this is this, yeah, uh -huh. same thing for Logic. You click on here and it's going to start recording. Uh -huh. Same thing for Ableton again. So like this, ladies. And just make sure to uh, keep your distance away from uh, the microphone. That way you can get a clean signal because that's the most important thing. And trust me, any engineer can make you sound amazing. If you get a clean signal from your vocals, just leave the rest to the engineers. But of course, we're gonna go through those one by one, step by step. But just just know that if you get a clean signal in the beginning, you're gonna do a, you're 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 done. Fifty percent, you're done. Okay. <laughs>